Okay. Nice finally to see you. Hey. Okay. This is Mr. Paul Spinella. Okay, how you doing? Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. Good morning, guys. How are you? I'm well. You did really good at the workshop, y'all did. For oh. your, yeah, you were the first question. <laughs> did good. All right, this is a uh, continued hearing in the matters of dockets FIC 2014-461 and 2014-823. Complaints by Wolfgang Kelvig versus the First Selectman, Town of Newtown, Chief, Police Department, Town of Newtown, Police Department, Town of Newtown, Board of Education, Newtown Public Schools, and the Newtown Public Schools uh, continued from April 25th, 2015. Uh, my name is Matthew Streeter. I'm commissioner and designated as the hearing officer in this matter. And with me today is attorney Tracy Brown, who is counsel to the commission and can answer any questions should you have any. I will note for the record the time is 9.33 and today's date is June 3rd, 2015. Our hearing is scheduled for an hour and a half, but it may be extended if I need further testimony. Uh, those that have been sworn in in the previous one are still under oath. Uh, will the parties identify themselves again for the record, please? Let's start with you. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Attorney Brown. My name is Attorney L.K. Wilson. I represent Mr. Halbig. My name is Wolfgang Halbig. I'm a National School Safety Consultant from Orlando, Florida. And you are the complainant? Yes, I am. Sorry. Good morning, Monty Frank with Cohen and Wolf. I represent the town of Newtown, which includes the Board of Education. Uh, Newtown Police Department and the First Selectman's Office who responded to this matter. And with me, now it's cop from my office. Okay. And I believe when we last left, you would uh, rested uh, the uh, as far as your questions for the uh, director, director of the, right. for the facilities. Facility Mr. Fayella. Mr. Fayella. We have other witnesses, however, Your Honor. Okay. Could, could the, you want to have cross examination on that? Mr. Brown, I'm going to call him in my direct case. Oh, okay. you may continue then. Very good. Um, to please, Mr. Commissioner, I'd like to call my next witness. I'd like to call Mr. A. Paul Spinella, attorney at law. Excuse me, whoever's camera that is, there's audio playing. We have that shut off. That's true. I think they're going to swear you in, my friend. Mm -hmm. Should we give it to who? Paul and this Mr. You. Frank. And Mr. Frank. Yeah, we're going to have to ask you to turn that off if you can't turn it off. Okay. Yeah. Or you, can, or you can bring it out in the hallway and come back in. I'm sorry, you keep shaking your head, but you're not doing it. If you want to take it out in the hallway. That's all Okay. Commissioner? Okay, I'll hold on. Let me see. It has to be sworn in. Yep. Okay. And if we try it, you uh, solemnly and swearly affirm and declare that the evidence you shall give in the case and all questions shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth upon the pains of penalty perjury? Yes. Okay. And uh, you are A. Paul Spinella. Can you spell your last name for the record? S-P-I-N-E-L-L-A. -L -L Good morning, Attorney Spinella. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Mr. Spinella, I've handed to you a document which uh, purports to be a letter dated April 16, 2014. Um, on your letterhead, but as a preliminary, let me just first ask you, um, Mr. Spinella, is it true that you were hired by Mr. Halbig to represent him vis-a-vis -vis certain freedom of information requests that he had directed to various town entities in Newtown? Yes. Okay. And as part of that representation, um, the letter that you have in your hand dated April 16, 2014, uh, was that a Freedom of Information Act request that you sent to the town? Yes. Objection. Uh, based on the document speaks for itself and it was not sent to the town. Well, if we tried to get it in without Mr. Spinella being here, then council would object to that as being un 
unauthenticated. So I'm this is suggesting a that you misrepresent what the document says. I have a problem with the document. <laughs> okay. Well, let me back oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so if you can please just rephrase the question. Okay, I'll rephrase the question. So, um, Attorney Spinella, is this a letter that you sent to Attorney Frank regarding this, the FOIA request that you had issued to the town of Newtown and its various entities? Yes. Okay. And so, have you looked through the entire letter? Yes. And this represents the entirety of this particular piece of correspondence? Yes. Okay. I'd like to put this into the record, Your Honor. This would be uh, complainants, I believe, C. We have an A. We have a B for ID. And then this would, I believe, Attorney Brown, BRC. Am I correct? You have a C already. Okay. Then it would be D. Okay. I think it would be D. All right. So, Mr. Spinella, would you hand that letter to the commissioner, please? Actually, it's the whole thing. He already has I have no objection. Okay. All right. Attorney Frank needs a copy. Mm. All right. Now, I'm turning your attention now to the letter dated uh, April 25th, 2014. Attorney Spinella appears to be on your letterhead. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. Okay, and I understand. Uh, well, what it, you let us ask you to tell us what this document is. It's a Freedom of Information request to the first selectman. And the first selectman's name is Patricia Leodra. All right. And does this document constitute the entirety of that correspondence? Yes. Okay. I would ask that this be marked as D. Have a D. E. Well, e. E. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right. May I continue, Your Honor? Yes. All right. Mr. Uh, Attorney Spinella, um, I've handed you what purports to be a correspondence from Attorney Frank on the Cohen and Wolf uh, letterhead dated May 2nd, 2014. Um, do you recognize this document? Yes. Um, do you remember receiving this document? Yes. And was this the entirety of the document that you received? As far was as it I two, remember, two sure. pages? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, may I put this in as... No objection. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put this in, Joe? Mm -hmm. You do? Okay. <coughs> All right. So, uh, Attorney Spinella, I'm directing your attention to the document that I just handed you, dated June 9, 2014 purports to be a letter from Attorney Frank to you on the letterhead of Conan Wolf. Yes. If you review the document, do you remember receiving this document? Yes, I do. And does it fairly represent the entirety of the document you received? Yes. Okay. I'd like to put this into the record, if I may. No objection. I'll just note for the record that this is also responded to one. Okay. Um, 
May I continue, Your Honor? All right. Mr. Spinella, Attorney Spinella, I'm handing you a document that's not on your letterhead, but it looks to be a copy of the uh, substance of a letter that you sent to Attorney Frank. Do you recognize this yes, document yes. dated June 13, 2014? Yes, I do. Did you, in fact, send the letter that contained the substance of this document? Yes. Okay. So, Your Honor, we would like to put this into the record. Any objection? Um, I don't. However, I will note that the version of the letter that is on letterhead and signed by Attorney Spinella is already in evidence as Respondent 3. Oh, very well then. We don't need to do that then. Draw that. Draw, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you have an age for ID then? No, they, they withdrew. They withdrew entirely. Yep. yep. We'll just go along with Respondent's exhibit numeration. All right, so Attorney Spinella, um, I've handed you a document and it purports to be a letter on your letterhead dated July 3rd, 2014. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. Okay, and um, does this represent the sum and substance of the, or the entirety of the document that you sent to Attorney Frank? Yes. On July 3rd, 2014? And, and why did you write this letter, um, Attorney Spinella? Um, that's that's how I got it from you, sir. Yeah, the letter, I, I, I certainly recognize. I remember drafting it, and, it, and the purpose of it was to provide a, a record here of what was what was happening. Were you attempting to work out the objections that Attorney Monty Frank had? Uh, delivered to you via correspondence regarding your FOIA requests? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And on, on, I'm going to direct your attention to the item listed number one on page one, the second sentence. Are you going to offer it to evidence? Not yet. Oh, okay. Well, now I, now I, look now I well, I'd like him to yes. re recognize his attachment, sir. Yes, I do. Now I. There's now a method I here. Now I remember. I was referring to the 1214-2012 article. Okay. And I attached it to the letter. Okay. So this document represents the entirety of your correspondence. Yes, that's right. May I offer this into the record, Your Honor? No objection. All right, Attorney Spinella, turning your attention to One more for Mr. Frank. Uh, a document that purports to be a letter from you to Attorney Frank on your letterhead, dated July 15, 2014. Um, it has as an attachment another letter dated July 14, 2014, one each to the Newtown School Board to the uh, selectman, Patricia Lodra, and also attached chief. is one to uh, uh, Chief Kehoe. Does that represent the entirety of that correspondence to Attorney Frank? Yes, it does. Have you also sent those attached letters individually to uh, the first selectman, to Chief Kehoe and to the chair? Yes, I did. Okay. So these were courtesy copies to Mr. Frank? That's right. Okay. I'd like to offer these, Your Honor. Okay, I'm going to also show you a document that's dated July 17th that purports to be a letter from you to Executive De Director Colleen Murphy on July 17th, 2014. 
uh, the Executive Director of the Freedom of Information Commission. Sign your letterhead, Mr. Spinella, excuse me, Attorney Spinella. Um, do you recognize this document, Attorney Spinella? Yes, I do. Okay. And what was the purpose of this letter? Uh, this was an appeal, I believe. Okay. And does this document that I've handed you represent the entirety of that correspondence to Executive Director Colleen Murphy of the Freedom of Information Commission? I believe it does. Um, I don't know if it includes the attachments. But this was the, the letter that I sent. There's no question about that. Okay. Well, may I put that into the record, Your Honor? Okay. Do you have any objection? No objection. All right. Well, we come to just very shortly here, but let me just direct your attention to the next document which I've handed to you, Attorney Spinella. It purports to be on your letterhead dated October 29, 2014 and directed to First Selectman Patricia Yodra of the town of Newtown. Do you yes. recognize this document? Yes. And yes. is this the entirety of your correspondence to uh, First Selectman E. Patricia Yodra of the town of Newtown? Yes. Okay. And what what specifically were you trying to attempt to do in this letter? To obtain the documents, I see. Okay, did you consider this to be a request under the Freedom of Information Act yes. Connecticut? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I would like to put this into the record okay. as well, Commissioner. Okay. All right. And did you hand your document? Yes, he gave it to him. Yeah. Okay, All right, we've got two more. All right, Attorney Spinella, I'm now directing your attention to another letter dated October 29, 2014. This one directed to the Newtown School Board Chair, Debbie Lideline. It's on your letterhead. It purports to be a two-page letter. Um, do you recognize this document? Yes. And did you send this document to uh, uh, Debbie Lideline, the Newtown School Board Chair, on October 29th, 2014? Yes. Does this fairly represent the entirety of the substance of the letter that you sent to her? Yes. And what was the purpose of this letter? To obtain uh, the documents listed pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. Okay. I'd like to put this into the record as well, Your Honor. No objection. Yes. Thank you. All right, Attorney Spinella, I'm directing you to yet another correspondence dated July 29, 2014. It's on your letterhead and it purports to be a letter to Chief Kehoe of the Newtown Police Department. Um, it appears to be two pages with an attachment of a certified mail receipt. Does this constitute the entirety of that document? Yes. Okay, and what were you trying to accomplish through this letter to uh, Chief Kehoe? To obtain the list of documents pursuant to the Freedom of Connecticut Freedom of Information Act. All right, I'd like to put this in as another. May I? Yeah. No objection. No objection. LBN? I inquire through Attorney Brown if you have uh, is exhibit respondents exhibit number one dated August fifth, twenty fourteen. I don't want to be repetitive. In four six one, I have as respondents one a June nine letter. Okay, then this is not duplicative. <laughs> All right, same drill. Then um, thank you for checking, Attorney Brown. Um, Attorney Spinella, 
This appears to be a letter addressed to you by Attorney Frank on Cohen and Wolf letterhead dated August 5th, 2014. Do you recognize this letter? Yes. And you did receive it? Yes. And uh, is this, it appears to be one page. Was it one page when you received it? I believe so. Okay. So I'd like to put this in as well, Your Honor. This will be CN if there's no okay. objection. Okay. No, this is exhibit R2. Okay. Make sure you ask him, were you directed by Monty Frank to respond to each of the entities individually instead of just to the town? So, um, Mr. Attorney Spinella, when, were you at any time advised by Attorney Frank to direct your uh, re freedom of information request directly to the individual entities rather than to the town writ large? Uh, objection. The, the question is direct to the town at large or the individual entities. I, I have no idea what that means. Oh, I, yeah. I think I, I, I understand. Over, understand over, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have to answer the question. Yeah. Yes, I was. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, Your Honor, Commissioner, I have no further questions for Attorney Spinella at this time. <laughs> Thank you. You want to answer Kevin Ancelotti? I want to what? Kevin Ancelotti, next witness. Who's that next? Huh? What about him? Let's talk about him when he gets on. He's not on yet. Episode Exhibit H. <laughs> to the change of the July 3rd? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Attorney Spinella. I'm showing you what's been handed at the end of the page. Which is your letter to me dated July 3rd, 2014. Is that correct? Yes. I'm showing you, for identification purposes, um, Respondents 5. This is in yet. No, the, right. he's asking for, he's asking for identification. For yeah, that's funny, sir. Do you have any objection? Um, not to it for identification, Commissioner. Okay. It's not listed okay. yet. Yeah. Just for sure. Thank you, sir. Mr. <coughs> Spinello, that was the response to your July 3rd letter, wasn't it? Well, it appears to be. All right, I offer it, please. For the full? Yes. Do you have any objection? Let me see. Let me see real quick. That's, that's not his response to him. No, that this is Monty Frank writing to Spinola. Yeah. And it says, it, we don't object to this. Okay. Yet. No objection, Your Honor. This be a full exhibit. Full exhibit R5? Yes.
most benevolent that the town is willing to work with us. I'm sorry, I have, I'm looking for the October 29, 2014 letter from Attorney Spinella. I thought it was Exhibit A, but perhaps it's our identification of the documents is not the same. What's the date? October 29, 2014. It's here. It's just here. I see. It was there attached are three. to the uh, letter to the executive director. Yes. That would be correct. All right, Attorney Smell, I'm showing you what's been entered as claims exhibit A in 823. I'd ask you just to go three pages back. Do you recognize that letter? And that's or to be another free information request to the town of Newtown. Well, I, this is an appeal to the three uh, pages back, sir. Three pages from the front. Yes, the October 29th letter. And what is your question? Is that? that purport to be a free information request made on behalf of your client, Mr. Halbig, to the town of Newtown? Yes. All right. I'll tell you what we are working at five and six. This is a letter dated November 3rd, 2014. I my office. Do you have that for you? Then why? I never saw yes. this. I've never seen that. But why does he direct us to? Did I receive it? I, I imagine so. I mean, I, I don't have an independent recollection of it. Did you recognize the signature on page two? Yes, that's uh, my staff. One of my staff members. Do you recognize the address of the recipient? Yes, that's my office. All right, I offer it, please. Exhibit. I've never seen it, but if the witness has identified it, I, I can't find an objection. Okay. No objection. Is that a copy? It is. Do you want this marked in 461 or 823? Um, <coughs> 823. Okay. So that's good. I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't have any exhibits from the respondent from the last hearing. So I'll be responding one. one. Respondents 2, which is a September 3rd, 2014 letter, should be in week 23. What date is it? September? September 3rd, 2014. Okay, so. It's Respondents 2. It was Respondents 2, and I marked it for 461, but you want that. Which means 23. Okay. Yeah, it's relevant. He's just going back to the same That's thing. Okay. So, would it be. Okay, just to continue on the front of the but just change it for you. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think you can just follow him for this person. I can't explain it to you. Yes, ma'am. Can you please show the witness that document? Oh, I'm sorry. Why did Frank direct him to send it to each of the 
they point to. Okay. I can't pay attention. I don't know. Okay. You want to write it down? Write down. You want to write down your question? Do you have a two documents in front of you, sir? We're referring to R1 and R2. Respond R2 and complaint is Exhibit A and E23. And what's the question? All right, Exhibit A is your appeal to the commission in docket number E23. Isn't that correct? Well, it is an appeal. I'm showing you what's been marked as respondents two. Do you have that in front of you, sir? Yes. All right. Turn the page, please, to page two. Yes. And read the response, please, to your request number two for copies of all emails, correspondence. School principal Don Hodgkin and her assistant. Well, I mean, you want me to read it? It yes, speaks sir. for itself. I'd like you to read it. Well, if I object to him selectively reading That's that right. commissioner. That's right. I believe that he ought to, if he's going to read from the document, he ought to read both the request as well as the response. That's fine. Okay. Copies of all emails to and from this uh, school principal Don Hodgkin and her assistant school principal from the period of May 1st, 2012 through December 13th, 2012 to the following school district departments. A, Human Resources, B, Finance Department, C, Maintenance Department, D, Staff Development, E, Assistant School Superintendent, F, School Superintendent, G, Food Services Provider, H, School District Transportation Provider, I, Curriculum Department. Response, the town objects to the request that it is vague and overly broad. It is also not a request for specific documents and would require research and analysis, which is not required under FOIA. During the period of time between September 3, 2014 and the date of your appeal, October 29, 2014, did you attempt to clarify the objection that was raised in response to Exhibit 2? Well, I, I proceeded in good faith in this entire appeal. Did you, did you attempt, I, did you you attempt to resolve the objection? Yeah, to answer the question. Objection. I should be he should allow to be testifying. Yes or no question. Be, yes, if you can answer the yes or no. I attempted to resolve this in good faith through the entire process, and I did not have a good faith response at any point. All right. Did so you say a yes or a no? Yes, I did. did, you, did so you say saying you did respond? Well, did, did I actually call Mr. Wolf at this late date after what all, all that transpired previously? Is that what you mean? Did you attempt to respond to the objection and resolve it? Uh, well, we had phone calls. Yes or no, sir? I, I don't have, do I re recollect a specific phone call after this date or before this date? Uh, uh, I don't remember. Did you send a letter in response? Were there any letters after September Attempting 3rd? to resolve the objection. I have no memory. Prior to issuing the FOIA request, did you make any effort to determine whether or not the Sandy Hook School had an assistant school principal? Did I attempt to find objection out? Objection to the relevance of that question. Hold on. Did I attempt to find out if Sandy Hook had an assistant school principal? I, you mean an assistant school superintendent? You made a request, sir, for a information from an assistant school principal. And my question to you is, did you okay. make any effort to determine whether or not Sandy Hook maybe School had an assistant school principal okay. for the period of time from May 1, 2012 through December 13, 2012? All right, maybe you can help me out here a little bit. Yes or no, where, sir? Where in the letter does it refer to assistant school principal? I see assistant school superintendent. Prior page, sir. 
he asked for copies of all emails to and from school principal Don Hochstrom and her assistant school principal for certain period. Okay, do I know if she had a assistant by name? I have no memory of that. Was there the position of assistant school principal during that period? I believe that she had an assistant. Okay. Did you make any effort to verify whether or not there was an assistant school principal during that period? Well, I did. My memory is that we did, and I can't remember exactly what steps we took. In fact, sir, during that period of time, the town of Newtown did not have an assistant school principal. Isn't that true? Objection no. to the testimony of counsel. It's a question. He already can I respond to that is, Isn't that true? You can answer yes or no. I understood that they did. I, uh, okay. I, I don't know. I thought that they did. Based on what? I can't. I have no independent recollection right now. Right. Prior to sending the request under the Free Information Act, did you make any effort to determine whether or not the Newtown School District had a staff development department? I had understood that they did, and uh, based on what? I, I what effort did I, you make, sir? I can't remember. I don't know. Prior to sending the request, did you make any effort to determine whether or not the Newtown School District had a school district transportation provider department? Well, most schools... We can stipulate the quickness if you like. Yeah, if you want to stipulate, yeah, stipulate. There's no staff development department or that there's no school district transportation provider, Commissioner, we're willing to stipulate to that to speed things along. That was information that's never been provided to us. If the department doesn't exist, maybe that would have been quicker to just tell us that. Well, we just allow him to ask the questions. Then. If, 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 you, if you, you say you want to stipulate, that's fine. That? That's fine. fine. I'll accept that stipulation. That these, well, if, if council is, is going down the line of indicating that these departments don't exist, so that the request was directed to departments that don't exist, that would have been news we could have used a long time ago. That we were directing it to departments that don't exist. We'll stipulate if the council is going to represent that as an officer of the board. And it's that information, those the information you would have had if there was any effort to be made to resolve the objections. So that stipulation is fine. I'm, I'm curious, however, that the line of questioning that you were engaged in, what was the point of that? Yeah. Was it just to establish that the, the um, agencies don't exist? Was that it to establish... It's to explore the objection, to determine that the uh, objection was appropriate, and had there been any effort whatsoever to resolve the objections, we could have narrowed the request as part of the interactive process that FOIA encourages the parties to engage in. But instead, what Attorney Smella did was ignore the objection in its entirety and took an appeal. I'm going to object to that line of argument prior to closing. Um, I think the record speaks for itself, and we'll both be able to argue our points at the end. Well, I'm, I'm actually, for purposes of the hearing officer, in his efforts to write a report, trying to even get even narrower with this. If the agencies don't exist, then there would be no records from those agencies. That's true. That, that point would be new. That's what he means. So is that what we're stipulating to? That we'll stipulate they don't, they don't exist, exist, but we were never told that before today. But that's really beside the point. The question is you wanted records from those agencies. If they don't exist, then there's no records no records. provided, and so that issue is not for the It's mute. That's what he needs. Is that what we're stipulating to? That you're not looking for any well, records from them anymore. It's they not don't exist. Attorney Brown, it's not an issue whether or not they exist. We stipulate that they don't. However, it is indicia of the pattern and practice of response that we have received from the town and its entities through this attorney that has been delay, deflection, and obfuscation. If we had known that these didn't exist, we could have, that would have narrowed the issue substantially. Well, Attorney, I think he, the way he was referring is that he had prior, prior to the given testimony that uh, between those dates he did not send any letter for clarification. From this letter, that would or, or make any effort at all to clarify the objection. Just took an appeal. Okay. Okay. 
so well. So, so we'll, we'll funny. Because it's still going on, and I'm not quite sure. But that resolves the stipulated okay. that. So they're, they're stipulated with those. Uh, I, I, I would, and as part of the stipulation, just to be clear, um, for the period of time at issue, are we also stipulating that the Sandy Hook School did not have an assistant school principal? We don't know that. Okay, I just want to make sure I understood the full breadth of the stipulation. I think the stipulation was clear. If there's no staff development department, and there's no school district transportation provider, and the commissioner that has been represented to the commissioner by you as an officer and attorney, then we'll take that and we'll stipulate to that. But I'm, not, I'm still going to argue regarding the good faith efforts and the lack thereof in this process. On January of 2012, the school board minutes showed there was an assistant principal named Salvatore working at Sandy Hook, and that's what we're basing it on. That's a fact. Go ahead, you need to say that. Attorney Spinell, at what point did you cease representing Mr. Holliday? I don't remember the exact day. It was a period of time? <clears throat> uh, end of March, beginning of April, I'm not clear. Of what year? This year. And, and why were you terminated? I think that's a confident that goes to the confidential issues. That's right. You know, except your client has already testified about that subject in the prior proceedings. Well, I, I did I'm not. not prepared to testify about it. I didn't testify to that. I, I didn't testify to that. He's putting words no, in. No, that, 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 that you did bring that up at the last hearing, but but uh, not I don't for the relevant. reason. Not the reason. Uh, what, what's the relevance of this? Well, for the other one, I think he mentioned it at the prior hearing. I think I'm entitled to explore the reasons. No, it's confidential. Hold on. This is, you're you're yeah, not testifying. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, May I speak the, to the objection, Your Honor, testimony before that, you rule? The exact testimony that he Go offered ahead. was he informed his prior attorney to engage in an interactive process to resolve the objections, and that his attorney did not, and that's why he terminated it. That is not exactly correct. That is not correct. true. That is not true. That's a lie. Well, you, you are next. Well, so the line of questioning was badgering my client by Mr. Frank whether or not he engaged in an interactive process. And prior to us going through this entire set of correspondence, I was unaware of the July 3rd letter where Attorney Spinella did in fact try to engage in the interactive process. So the testimony of my client at that time, I'm trying to find the page. transcript. Uh, I just don't know how this is going to help the commission and its de deliberations to figure out why Mr. Spinella was replaced by my counsel. Yeah. At this point, I don't know what the relevance is for, for the commission, unless you can provide more clarification. I, 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 again, the, the commission encourages the party to engage in the interactive process to resolve any objections to try to narrow the scope of uh, overly broad questions so that documents can be produced. The town attempted to do that, uh, provided an objection and received no response and said that the appeal was taken automatically. Mr. Halby testified that he had fired his prior lawyer um, during the line of questioning that dealt with engaging in an interactive process to resolve the objections. So I'm asking this witness, uh, if, he re if he recalls, why he was terminated. Well, what does it matter? I don't believe this is relevant, yeah. Your Honor, and it's wasting I think we'll, our time. Well, we just move on. Uh, I know for the question. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. Any further rebuttal? No, nothing further, Your Honor. You're all set, Mr. Thank you, Attorney Spell. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Did you take our, do we still have any exhibits? Any oh, exhibits I followed. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Attorney Spinella. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
No, we're about 45 minutes in. We still, uh, as I mentioned, uh, last year, <laughs> no. we haven't even gotten to the, the respondents, so I don't know if I'm uh, Well, then, yes, Your Honor. Um, all right. So my next witness would be Kevin Anzalotti, who is the chief custodian at the San Diego Elementary School. Is Mr. Anzalotti here? He's not. Is there a reason why Mr. Anzalotti is not obeying his subpoena? Is there a reason why you didn't go to court to enforce it or otherwise waive the subpoena or ask the commission to ask the subpoena? I asked the commission to inquire of counsel whether he released this witness. He was told not to come. Then why are the other ones here? I think that the commission should take an inference. Redirect the key about the. You, you want to write that down? No. Okay, well, what we're going to. I have you know, no uh, jurisdiction. That's exactly that, what but, they knew. But, uh, you know, what, we can move forward. You can present something, you know, information to me, I guess, what you thought. But the, if it comes down that, uh, as I hear the case, that this testimony uh, has more relevance, then we can talk about maybe moving forward to at a different, at another hearing to have testify at that point. I would ask that the commission take an inference that this client, this witness, would have given testimony in support of our case. I would object strenuously to that. Will you also I'll, release I'll the witness you. without I, my I permission? I'll, I'll uphold the. Uh, I'll uphold the objection. All right. May I please, or, please, wait, commission? I want to over, over, over. I don't know. No, I, I'm, I'm upholding. There's no objection, really. She's, she's just basically putting on a record that she did something, oh. and that's fine. Okay. And so noted for the record. Thank you, Attorney Brown. All right, please, the commission. The next witness I would like to call is Keith Alexander. Solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that the evidence you shall give in the case now in question shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth upon the pains of penalty of perjury. I do. Okay. And uh, it's, your full name is Keith Alexander? Yes, it is. Okay. Record show that Mr. Alexander took the oath. You may proceed. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, Mr. Alexander. Good morning. Um, thank you for coming in response to my subpoena. I appreciate that. It's always nice when people do that. Um, so, how long have you been on the Board of Education for the town of Newtown? Uh, since 2011, I believe. 2011? Do you remember approximately what time of year it was? Uh, November. November? All right. And now I understand you're currently the board chair? I am. You're the chairman of the Board of Education for the Town of Newtown? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, has anybody told you not to discuss this Freedom of Information action? Not that I can think of. Okay. Nobody's asked you to sign any documents or orally promised not to discuss the incidents of Sandy Hook on December 14, 2012? No. Okay. Were you a board member on March 5, 2014, when Thomas Hennig, who is a public officer here at the For uh, Freedom of Information Commission, conducted a Freedom of Information Act training to the Board of Education? Yes. Okay. Let me hand you a document. I'd like to ask you to turn to the second page. The first page purports to be a cover letter from the commission to me based on my request for Mr. Hennig's documents given to you. Do you, re do you see the document that says notice of meetings? Yeah, oh, sorry. Did you receive that document yeah. from Mr. Hennig? Yes. Did you receive any other materials from Mr. Hennig during that training? Possibly. Um, I don't remember specifically. What was the purpose of that training, Mr. Alexander, if you remember? Uh, the purpose is to familiarize the board and uh, the, com the community at large as to processes that are uh, covered under FOI. The Freedom of Information Act? Yeah. Okay. And did he explain to you what pub rec public records are? I believe so. And did he explain to you what records are exempt from disclosure 
and what records need to be disclosed? I think so. Okay. Are school board policies dealing with school trips exempt from public record disclosure? Objection relevance. We've requested the... Those requests are not part of this appeal. It's on the consent agenda. It's related. I can show it. Yep, I can Okay, so what's the, what, what's the relevance for this? We had requested uh, through um, our Freedom of Information requests uh, copies of the school board um, meeting uh, consent agenda on January 23rd, 2013. It's our belief that that consent agenda that was, or the documents that were purveyed to us were, do not constitute the, the entirety of the records. So my question to Mr. Alexander is, we, we have information and belief, Your Honor, I think that Mr. Halvick testified during the last commission hearing, that there was evidence or information that a group of children from Sandy Hook Choir went to the Super Bowl. We did not see that on the consent agenda, and we're looking to see whether those documents were complete. The question I asked Mr. Alexander was whether or not school trips um, are, public school board policies dealing with school trips are exempt from public record disclosure. My next question would be whether or not, if there was a school trip out of town, whether that would have been on the consent agenda. Yeah. All right, I'll allow that question. Would that be a public record, sir? Uh, can you please restate the original question? So you think school board policies are public record? Do I think that? Are they? I, I don't know what our school, what our policy says about that specifically. I haven't looked for that information, so I don't, I, I don't have that covered, and I don't remember whether that specifically is covered under the FLI conversation. Uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to say something that I don't know. So you're the chairman of the board, and you've been on the board since 2011, and you do not, your testimony is that you do not know the policy regarding school trips out of state. I do not know what your question was, which is whether those are covered under FOI or not. I'm not Okay, we'll sure leave that to the lawyers then. Do, do, do you know of, do, are you aware of, or is it in effect that a group of school children from Newtown called the Sandy Hook Elementary School Chorus sang at the Super Bowl in New Orleans on February 3rd, 2013? I, I don't know what the name was given that you're referring to specifically, but I know what you're referring to, and I, <laughs> that happened. There were students that went to the Super Bowl, yes. Students went to the Super Bowl. From Sandy, Ho was from Sandy, from Sandy Hook Elementary. Oh, you have to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were students from Sandy Hook Elementary School that I, went to the Super Bowl? I believe so. I don't have a direct record of that myself. Were you in attendance at the January 23rd um, meeting of the school board on 2013? Again, I don't recall that specific name. Would your memory be aided by a copy of the minutes of the Board of Education meeting for that date? I would certainly trust our minutes. Okay. Question. My question was, did you attend the January 23rd, 2013 Board of Education meeting for Newtown, Connecticut? Yes. Okay, so you were there. Do you recall whether or not there was any discussion about giving permission or approving of the school trip for these children to travel to the Super Bowl? Objection. Relevance. Consented we've in. We've gone over this, Your Honor. Commissioner, um, our request was for the consent agenda in its entirety all items, we have not received anything that has any indicia about the school trip. The evidence suggests that either this is a phantom item that was somehow put through without being recorded, or we haven't gotten everything. I'll allow the question, you can answer that. Uh, 
sorry. As the as a, okay, well let me switch gears. <laughs> as a as the chair I mean, of the Board of Education and also as a member of the Board of Education back in January twenty third of twenty thirteen. Were you aware of any discussion regarding whether or not to give permission to a group of students to travel out of state, a group of students from Newtown, Connecticut, to attend the Super Bowl in New Orleans on February 3rd, 2013? I was not chair at the time. I was a board member. I said I, that. I do not remember having any conversations of that kind. I, I literally don't remember. It's not something I can remember. So, so wouldn't, wouldn't the board have had to approve such a field trip? The board policies for uh, approving field trips are probably in our board policy sheet. Do you ever, re do you ever <coughs> approve of field trips? Yes. Okay, so was this a field trip? I don't have any information on that. I can't answer that question. Now. Do you remember ever discussing it at any meetings? I do not remember discussing it ever. Did you go on that trip? I did not. Do you know anyone who did? I don't know anyone. Okay. According to school board policy, don't these school trips need to be approved first by the principal and then the superintendent and then go to the Board of Education? Uh, again, I don't have the policies in front of me, but I will say that under normal Give them the policy. a school-sponsored trip it requires those items. Okay. Was this a school-sponsored trip, to your knowledge? Again, I don't have any information on that. You don't know. Okay. Looking at what I've handed to you, which is... Um, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see here. I've handed you a document. It purports to be the minutes from the Board of Education meeting on Tuesday, January 23rd, 2013. It indicates excuse me, that you were there as a member, not as the chairman, but as a member. Does this look to be a complete document? Is there anything missing? I don't notice anything missing. It looks like our regular minutes from that meeting. I will know for the record that the minutes are not signed. So I don't know what this is. Yeah, that's a good question. Why weren't we giving signed yeah, minutes? That's a good one. Thank you. Can I inquire Thank you. the commissioner whether or not a copy of signed minutes exists? To Attorney Frank? I'm inquiring to the commission rather than addressing Mr. Frank directly. Does the, uh, do we have a copy of the sign? He's the school board attorney. He should know. He's the school board attorney. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, you know, he, he doesn't have a copy. No copy? Uh, he doesn't have a copy. Well, why, why would I? You're the school board attorney. Because you said you brought everything that you gave us <laughs> the last time. But that's I don't think okay. I gave this to you. Okay. I don't know where you got this document. All right. Does it look to be accurate in terms of its notes? Again, I have not read this in detail, nor would I have a direct moment to say it was accurate. I'm used to our notes, our minutes being accurate and reviewing them after a meeting. Okay, so your testimony proving. is that you don't know. All right. Is that it? Is that your testimony? Is I, it accurate or not? I, do, I cannot answer that question. Okay. You're not giving me sufficient Place okay. Or position to answer that. Okay. All right. We'll move on. Unbelievable. What do you want to do with this guy? I think we should go back to. No. No, no. They're quite the last question you have. When were the minutes for January 23rd finally approved by the school board to put in their records? Okay. Uh, Mr. Alexander, when were these minutes for the January 23rd, 2013 meeting finally approved? 
again, I don't know. I'm sure that that information would be in following minutes. I didn't quite hear you, sir. In the following minutes? The following minutes. Usually the... the sorry. Come up and sit close to the Usually at the following meeting or a subsequent meeting, we will approve the minutes. April 2nd. I see. Uh, okay, so your, under, your experience has been that typically the minutes from the last meeting are approved at the following meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. No questions. Okay. Excuse me. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Dr. Uh, Joseph Arardi. Uh, if you uh, solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that the evidence you shall give in the case and all questions shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, I upon the pain of the torture, I do. And to uh, Dr. Joseph, thank you, Commissioner. Um, Dr. Arardi, that's correct. How do you pronounce that? Okay. First, my apologies for misspelling your name on the subpoena, um, but I appreciate your attendance. Are you here as a result of my subpoena to you, sir? Oh, yeah. Okay. And did you understand that I asked you to bring certain documents with you to this hearing? Objection. It's yeah, just, he's, it's he's, he's here. And he's willing to testify. The document request that was attached to the subpoena, um, we do not believe is enforceable. Um, they were subpoenaed the last time. The commissioner suggested that if he wanted to enforce the subpoena, she should go to court to do so. She did not do that. We believe it's waived, and secondly, it's truly an end run around the FOIA request. Um, they're actually seeing again for the same documents that are subject to the FOIA request, which simply will either produce or don't exist. The purpose of the subpoena is not to duplicate what was in the original FOIA request, which is now subject to the appeal. Then an opportunity to mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to allow you to uh, cross examine or uh, to have the testimony, but if it turns out that it looks like we need these doc the documents that you're okay. on, you can always ask for those to be seen. So I'll let you do, you have them provide written, you know, All right. I mean, May, he'll, he'll provide I verbal testimony at this point. Well, I, I wish that Your Honor would, prior ruling, let me have an opportunity to, to meet the objection. Okay, well, Is it? possible okay yes, thank you um so all right as as you may recall commissioner and uh, attorney brown um from the last hearing i did try to put into our parties did try to put into evidence the school board policy regarding inspections of the school and the yearly inspections uh 300 dash 500 and i'm uh, not 300 school school board policy 3-500 and 3-500.1 council Attorney Frank, who also represents the Board of Education, objected to that and said he didn't recognize those board policies and didn't know if they were authentic. So now, of course, I have subpoenaed Dr. Arardi to come here today to testify, and I su submitted the subpoena ducis tecum, which means with documents to bring with you. He was commanded to bring attachment A, which indicates the official copies of the Newtown Board of Education policies as follows. Building inspection policy number 3-500, Inspection Procedures Policy Number 3-500.1. Two pages, Your Honor. I, I don't have Two any pages. objections if you want to enter those documents to evidence. You did last time. The, the now, Your Honor. You, the ones you put in last time were, uh, had other things in them, like a photograph. Um, if you want to ask so the witness it? for the policies, you can ask them to identify the policies. If he recognizes them, then they'll come into evidence. So my subpoena duties take him, Your Honor, was for him to bring with him those policies. 
but we also asked for inspection reports, um, which we've already been told don't We're exist. We're not dealing through the, the commission, Your Honor. I, I'm addressing the commission only. I speak only to the commission. Further down, there are other requests, yes, but this preliminary line of questioning speaks solely to whether or not this witness, as commanded by my subpoena, which he has testified he appeared under, uh, has brought with him those policies. That's the question. Okay. So I guess, as I was starting to say, you could ask, the, you could ask those questions. And, uh, and as I said, if, if it comes to the point with the if you don't have those documents to enter, we decide that we need to look at them, we can, we can ask, ask for them to be provided. Okay. Through our own security. I'm sorry? Through our own security. Through my security. Understood. Um, all right. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Dr. Arardi, did you, under command of my subpoena, bring with you a copy of uh, the school board of education policies regarding Building inspection policy number 3-500 and inspection procedures policy number 3-500.1. I brought it. And, and they're attached to your subpoena. I'm not sure what you're asking. Wait, because you wondered, Your Honor, this has been yeah, let's, reflection, let's, we'll, 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 obfuscation. He can answer. Go ahead. He's allowed okay. to answer. All right. So, Your Honor. Well, if you started to answer the question. Okay. Yeah. He said yes. So, do you have them? May I have them from you? Yes. Okay. Did you review the attachments? Yes. And do they properly reflect what the board policy is? Yes. Okay. So let's return to those attachments now, shall we? Would you be so kind, sir? To read. This is pretty short, but I would, would you be so kind, Dr. Arari, to read into the record Building Inspection Policy 3-500? The Board of Education acknowledges that the public school buildings and their facilities represent a sizable public investment and are an integral part of the learning environment. Further, it is acknowledged that the schools and their facilities can give services only to the extent that they are propelled, properly utilized, operated, and maintained. I appreciate that. Thank you. And now, would you turn your attention to inspection procedures 3-500.1, and I would just ask you kindly, sir, if you would read just a little bit slower. A full and complete inspection of each school building, its grounds, and its facilities will be conducted by the building administrator and the supervisor of buildings and grounds for safety, cleanliness, general maintenance by August 1st. Appropriate items identified in this annual review will be included in the Board of Education's five-year capital improvement plan for next operating budget. Additional, additional informal building inspection will be conducted routinely during the school year and when warranted, written requests for repair will be prepared by the building administrator and a custodian to be filed with the supervisor of business and grounds. Copies of these inspections will be submitted to superintendent schools and the director of business. The supervisor of buildings and grounds will meet periodically with the director of business to discuss relevant building maintenance matters. An annual report will be prepared by the supervisor of buildings and grounds and the director of business to be incorporated into the annual report by the superintendent to the Board of Education. Good. Very well, thank you, sir. Um, so, sir, as a superintendent, are you required to follow this board policy? Yes. Okay. And um, are you required to conduct building inspections on an annual basis per school board policy? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what does that policy mean to you as a school superintendent? The policy means to me that through the empowerment of our director of buildings and operations, um, ongoing conversation to ensure the appropriate teaching and learning environment for all students and staff. And would that include items that are safety issues? 
Yes. Okay. So as a result of these required inspections, would you be given a copy of a building inspection report? The practice in the Newtown Public Schools is that the Director of Building and Operations is a cabinet member which meets weekly with the superintendent of schools. The conversation takes place if there are any concerns pertaining to building safety or security, um, they are immediately addressed uh, first in conversation and then in writing. Okay. You got it. Okay. So there is a, a these are reduced to a writing, these reports. That's not what he testified to. He just said writing. I, I, Sorry, but it's, it's, it is exhausting. I thought we talked about that he meets weekly. And he gets it in writing. And then he gets it in writing. Yeah, no, that, that is not what I said. What I, what I stated was that um, the director of buildings and grounds is a member of the, the district's cabinet team. The cabinet meets weekly. There are, are conversations relevant always to student uh, safety and, and, and the safety of all. Um, as every cabinet member has the opportunity to speak at, at, at such a meeting. If there are concerns pertaining to uh, building operations or safety, then they are addressed immediately and followed through immediately. By work okay, is, by and that is through work orders nonetheless, right? Wouldn't, that, wouldn't they be addressed through the creation of a work order? They, would, they could be addressed in, in a number of different ways. They could be addressed through a work order. They could be addressed through a, uh, an RMP, which means that we're going up to bid for an issue. Um, but they are immediately addressed um, through the through the, the work of our director of operations and buildings through, through my consent. So is there any ever any a building inspection report created for any of the schools? The building inspections are done by our director of operations. Um, I trust his leadership um, and that, that the director of operations is a direct report to my office um, and we have continued conversations pertaining to the safety and the teaching environment for all students. Are you saying or is it your testimony that enough, there's no report that is reduced to writing? That is not my testimony. Okay, then is there a report reduced to writing? The, Ongoing conversation with the, building, the director of buildings and, and, and grounds consists of um, a process that, that takes place throughout the entire school year. If there is a need to address any safety item, the Newtown Public Schools is addressed immediately. If there is a need to have that in writing for a request for a proposal to do the work or for a work order to be commissioned to do the work, then it will be addressed in writing. An annual report will be prepared by the Supervisor of Buildings and Grounds and the Director of Business to be incorporated into the annual report by the Superintendent to the Board of Education. What's the name of that report? The, I can tell you the process on the report. I can only speak under my watch. I've been the Superintendent of Newtown for just over a year. What takes place at the end of each school year is an evaluation. And during that, that evaluation, there's a conversation with each employee that reports to me, including the director of operations, including the director of business. I am the person responsible for the annual report to the Board of Education. I will extract from the conversation relevant information that's important to include in the annual report from the director of operations and from the director of business. That report is put together in July. It goes to the Board of Education in August and it represents the previous school year. What's the report called? What's the report called? It's the annual report for the Newtown Public Schools. The annual report for the Newtown Public Schools. Okay. So it's not called an inspection report? That is correct. Okay. Is that annual report for the Newtown Public Schools, is that given to the Board of Education? It is given to the Board of Education for their, their approval it becomes a, a record of the community. And so it's a public record? That's correct. And does that annual report for Newtown Public Schools, does that inform the creation of the five-year building maintenance plan? If, if it's relevant to the report, either in that, that same year or moving forward, it would. That's the capital improvement plan that you're, you're referring to. Okay.
So if there is a high risk safety item that is noticed during the inspection process, who decides when that when and how that gets repaired? I, I can only speak to the present practice. The the present practice we have a risk assessment protocol in our school district. Uh, it is addressed immediately. We will assess the risk and move appropriately. And what what is the scale of that assessment? The, the scale of that assessment is, in, is to include our, our safety officials. Uh, it may include uh, the, the Newtown Police Department, um, and that we will always err on the side of, of precaution and safety. Okay. Let me switch gears now and ask you a, a different line of questioning, if I may. You sure um, okay, thank you, sir. As superintendent, um, do you sign off on all recommended school field trips before the trip goes to the school board for approval? I do not. My it, The present practice in Newtown is my assistant superintendent takes that responsibility. The assistant superintendent signs off on those. Okay. Is it also the assistant superintendent who places the school, uh, any field trip permission requests on the school board agenda? The process, the present practice in Newtown would be that uh, by policy, trips that need Board of Education approval would go from the Assistant Superintendent's Office to the Secretary of the Board of Education, perhaps to be my Executive Assistant, and that person takes responsibility for building the agenda with the School Board Chair and the Superintendent. Okay. Okay. All right. circle the wagons with this guy. What, what else you the form the five-year maintenance plan? Are those not high priorities? Or why were they not fixed until you... He wasn't... He wasn't... Okay, fine. Let it go. Yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. O'Rourke. I have no further questions, Your Honor. I do have some questions. Uh, Dr. O'Rourke, when did you become the superintendent? I accepted the position in January 2014. My first day on the job was here for 14 years. And prior to uh, becoming the superintendent, were you an employee of the town of Newtown? I was not. So on 12-14-2012, you were not either the superintendent or otherwise employed by the town of Newtown, correct? That is correct. When you became the superintendent of schools for the town of Newtown, were you presented by, with FOIA requests from Mr. Halby? Yes. And in response to those requests, did you diligently search for documents? Yes. <coughs> as far as you're aware, were all the documents that are responsive to the request produced? Yes. And did you ask other people within your employee to search for documents? Yes. And as far as you're aware, did they search for those documents? And did they the provide the right would be in point that we get to work on this on the day before the hearing? Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to search them. So why did we wait till? Thank you. And if I could also please have um, complainants to do it. some testimony about the consent agenda at the Newtown School Board meeting of January 23rd, 2013. I just want to clarify that for the commission. So you see there um, in request two is a copy of the consent agenda at the Newtown School Board meeting of January 23rd, 2013. He yeah. wasn't there. And was that document provided? And is it contained he wasn't in there. response to the four and attached to the consent agenda are a number of documents. Is that correct? What, what are those documents? The, the attachments represent the the action that the board will take on that particular particular item throughout the, the course of the meeting. So would that be the copies of all supporting documents relating to each consent agenda item for the Newtown School Board meeting of January 23rd, 2015? Yes. So 
as far as you're aware, a complete copy of the consent agenda and supporting documents were produced. Correct. And that's contained within response to the four? Correct. Okay. Nothing further. That's not true. Can we direct your honor? Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. O'Rarty, where are those records actually kept? The school board records? Yes. The board of education minutes in yeah. central office in Newtown Public Schools. Is that within your control, your yes. area? So you're actually located physically within that area? Correct. Okay. And did you you yourself personally pull those records? The records, I did not pull them myself. I reviewed the records. Okay. Staff, staff pulled the records. You had a staff person. Correct. How long do you keep these kinds of records in consent agendas and so forth? Decades. It's all by statute. Okay. So, all right. And... Um, are these in a in a sealed or a controlled secure area? They're in a safe environment. They're in a safe environment. Okay. And what do you mean by that? It means that the access is only limited to staff. Okay. I don't I think we're done with that. Just one more question though, okay. We have not been provided the the, the, doc, the attachments to the board members. We don't want the agenda. So um, okay, Dr. Rorari, the consent agenda, the supporting documents, what, what were the supporting documents that were attached yeah. to that consent agenda? Given to the board members. Given to the board members. <clears throat> and Daniels, why is the field trip not listed? We don't want the agenda. The January 23, 2013 consent agenda consisted of uh, numerous minutes from previous board meetings, December 17, 2012, January 8, January 15, January 17, 2013. A field trip by the debate team from Newtown High School and the that Newtown High School had So where's the field trip for them? Okay, so where was the field trip for the Sandy Hook students or Elementary. the Newtown schools, uh, Newtown school students who went to the Super Bowl on February 3rd, 2013. Um, I had testified that, that my arrival time in Newtown was April 2014. I was not part of this meeting. I did not prepare the agenda. But you searched the records. So, but you searched the records and you didn't find anything relating to that trip? I, I did not search the records for the trip. I was not asked. Oh, that's right. Records. My apologies. Okay. Um, so you can testify regarding the records from that time period, but you can't testify regarding the policy and procedures from that time period. That, that is incorrect. I, I, my testify, my, 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 my response to the question pertaining to the consent agenda that was presented on this date, January 23rd, and the action the board took for the minutes of January 23rd. That's all I can testify to is the written record. Okay. That's good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rodney. Dr. Rodney. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, we're just about 90 minutes in to our 90 minutes. Um, Go around. So I think I think we're going to have to hold off on any further uh, witnesses. One more. We're going to have to have the, uh, a lot of have one more. To start putting on their defense, because as it is, the just, of proof is on that. Just one more for redirect. No, no, just so, this, this is important. He'll be up. Okay. So rather than call a new witness for redirect, then maybe we'll just, if we have questions yeah. for If they have them, okay. then we'll see how Very we well. Uh, does so, lot of there. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, 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 I know I mentioned those for 90 minutes. I think Corey. at this point, we did book that this would go for wow. up to another 90 minutes. So. I was just going to ask you if you could mention to her that we couldn't really hear him. And I was sitting oh, okay, right behind okay, you. Okay. Okay. All right, we are back on the record. Attorney Frank, you want to begin the uh, respondent's case? Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to offer three exhibits um, in A23, um, respondents three, four, and five, um, which um, I spoke with Attorney Wilson and we 
agreed that they can come in and vote for this. Yes, we graciously agreed to do that, Your Honor, in the spirit of cooperation. <coughs> in this order? Yes, Thank you. It's nice to stipulate. Save so much time. So for the record, respondent three is an email from Attorney Wilson to me with a copy to Mr. Alvey dated Thursday, May 7, 2015. Response four, eight twenty-three is a letter from me to Attorney Wilson dated May 18, 2015. Respondents five and eight twenty-three is a letter from me to Attorney Wilson. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to call uh, Mr. Fiello. Oh, I can't wait for that one. You're still under oath. Where's your pen? Thank you. I don't have uh, a Mr. pen. That's why I can't write your notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you ever do with those work orders? Um, Give them the work orders. And why would you fix it in 13? Can you write it out? Angelotti report to you. Yes, he does. And what's his position? He's a custodian at San Diego School. All right. And in your capacity as director of facilities, did Dr. Arardi ask you to review FOIA requests that were submitted to the town by Mr. Halvey? Yes. And did you do so? Yes, I did. And did you search for documents in response to that FOIA request? Yes, I did. And did you produce all? documents that you were able to locate in response to those requests. Yes, I did. And they have been turned over to the to Mr. Halvig as far as you know? Yes. Okay. So I'd like to direct your attention, please, first to um, case 461, in particular uh, Exhibit A. Starting, please, with request number one, which was uh, concerning the Sandy Hook School school security system. Do you see that request? Yes, I do. Okay. And did you produce all documents in response to that request? Yes, I did. Okay. Was there a security system installed in 2012 at the Sandy Hook School? No, there was not. All right. Now, showing you um, responses to debate four, are the documents that are at the beginning of that exhibit all of the documents related to the uh, invoices and contracts for the security system that was in the school? Yes. Okay. Now, turning your attention, please, to request 5A. That's for copies of the Tri-Annual Asbestos Inspection Report for the Sandy Hook Elementary Schools for the years 2002 to 2012. Do you see that? Yes, I do. All right. And are those reports required by the state? Yes, they are. And did you locate those reports? Yes, I did. And were those produced? Yes, they were. All right. Now, turning your attention, please, to 5C. Is there copies of any report showing levels of lead paint and PCB inside the Sandy Hook Elementary School for the years 2002 to 2012? Do you see that? Yes, they do. All right. Does the state require the you to produce reports showing lead paint or PCP? No, you do not. Okay. And were those reports ever um, created? No, they were not. Do they exist? No, they do not. Turning your attention, please, to 5D, which is a request for letters sent to parents and school staff notifying them of the hazardous materials inside the Sandy Hook School Elementary School in 2009 and 2012. To your knowledge, um, what hazardous materials are required to be disclosed to parents and staff? Asbestos. And did you look for those reports? Yes, we did. And did you find them? Yes. And were they produced? Yes. And are they contained in Respondents Exhibit 4? Yes. Turning your attention, please, to Request 6B which is a request for a copy of a contract in connection with 6A above, and 6A concerns the name and contact information of the environmental biohazardous waste removal company contracted by the town or subdivision thereof who conducts sanitation and cleanup 
on or after December 14, 2012, in Sandy Hook Elementary School premises. You see that? Yes, I do. All right. Just, we all know what we're talking about. What occurred on December 14, 2012, in Sandy Hook School? Okay. Objection as to relevance, Your Honor. This is a document request. We're asking for documents. We're not, I don't think it's going to be helpful. It's a condition to go through. Just one question by way of background. And if, in fact, the commission can take judicial notice of it. If like, I have only checked to judicial notice. Is it even this or one question? Um, so, fourteen was the day of the tragedy and the shooting. And in response to that tragedy, do you know whether or not the town contracted with a biohazard company in connection with the Sandy Hook School? Yes, I do, and the town did not. The town wouldn't have a copy of the contract between the town and the subdivision and any biohazard company responsible for the cleanup of the school, correct? No, they wouldn't. Have. That's a correct statement. That's right. The school board should have it. All right. Can I please have um, Exhibit A in 823? Showing you with the mark, which is a full exhibit, exhibit A, A23, which includes the freedom of information request dated October 29, 2014. Do you have that in front of you? Yes, All right. And were you asked to, oh, let me direct your attention, please, to request one, number one. Do you see that? Yes, I do. All right. And it's for copies of all maintenance work orders submitted by the school principal, Don. Hoxbrum or her designee to the school district maintenance department facilities for any repairs, new classroom doors, or painting from July 1, 2012 through December 13, 2012. You see that? Yes, I do. All right. And were you asked to locate and search for any documents in response to that request? Yes. And did you do so? Yes, I did. And how did you do that? Um, the uh, <coughs> reprint out of our database, we have a, a work order database. All right, and the hard copies for those work orders, were they, are they kept by the town of Newtown? They're not kept. Right. And did you produce all of the documents from the database in response to that request? Yes, I did. Now, request number two, I'm sorry, one dot two asks for copies signed by the principal or designee showing the of completion of repairs together with timestamp showing job completion. See that? Yes, I do. All right. And do those documents exist? No, they do not. And why not? They're not kept. Uh, they're put into the database as closed and or completed with a date. And would the principal or the designee sign off on work orders? It's typically done by the maintenance folks who actually do the work. But not the principal? No. Turning your attention, please, to Item number two, copies of all emails to and from school principal Don Hoxfrom and her assistant school principal from the period of time May 1, 2012 through December 13, 2012 to the following school district departments and it includes the maintenance department. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first, during that time period, was there an assistant school principal at Sandy Hook Elementary School? I believe so. Was it a school principal or a lead teacher? I'm not, I'm not sure. Right. <laughs> Did you search for documents between Don Hoxfrom and the maintenance department in response to that request? Yes, I did. And did you locate those documents? Yes, I did. And were there actual emails with the maintenance department? The other round. Were there documents between the principal and you? Yes. And what what were those? Emails? Emails, that's right. And were they printed out and produced? Yes, they were. All right. And um, does Kevin Anzalotti report to you? Yes, he does. And who is Kevin Anzalotti? Take custodian San Diego. And did you ask Mr. Anzalotti for documents in response to that request? Yes, I did. And were they produced? Yes, they were.
as far as what you did, you were able to locate and produce all emails between Don Hoxcomb and maintenance department, department personnel, is that correct? That's correct. That's it, Your Honor. Speech, Your Honor. If I may, yes. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Fayella, how can you be certain that all of the emails to members of the maintenance department from Don Hoxburn were produced? I had uh, Carmella, our chief department director, uh, check. So you didn't actually look and produce those yourself? You had another I, person produce them? I directed our, our IT person, right? Okay. And when did you provide those documents to Mr. Halbig? I'm not sure when. Uh, the documents that were just introduced, uh, including response to your five, uh, indicate that they were sent to Attorney Wilson by Overnight Express um, on June 1st, after we had a dialogue back and forth which clarified and narrowed the scope of request number two. The questions of the, the witness. According to this document, June first. And when was the first time that we requested that you produce those documents? Uh, objection. It's the very heart of the issues, Commissioner. Um, timeliness is very much at the heart of this case. Prompt timeliness. So, if I may be heard. Yes. There was an objection to the request. One of the objections was that the request was to the maintenance department itself. We were looking for some clarifications whether they were talking about the maintenance department or the personnel. Finally, in May, uh, there was a narrowing of that request so that we were able to then go look to see whether, for the first time, they were asking for personnel. So at that point, because there were no emails with the maintenance department email, which is a separate email box, um, we then pursued That's individual members of the maintenance department, and as soon as they were located, they were produced. That's some fine parsing. All we got to do is click maintenance department. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to over, you know, overrule your objection. Anybody can proceed. Yeah. Can you restate the question for the witness? I can. Thank you, Commissioner. So, uh, Mr. Fayella. When did you first receive a request, a request for documents under the Freedom of Information Act from Don Hoxsprung to the maintenance department? You can answer if you remember. I actually don't recall. Would it have been October 29th of 2014? According to this document, yes, it says it was re received on November 12th. Okay. So, then you've had the documents FedExed to arrive on Tuesday of this week, June 2nd, correct? That's correct. Okay. When did we get the work orders? What about the work orders? Um, when did you do a search for the work orders. I don't recall. Exactly do you recall I... the year? I really, I really can't give you a good answer, but I just don't remember when we actually printed those out. And I wasn't, wasn't asking you when you printed them out, but I I would appreciate that information as well. You're saying you don't recall when you printed them out. Right. And they're electronically stored. That's right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, when did you deliver them to us? Mm -hmm. When did he deliver them to us? When did you deliver those documents to, uh, to your counsel, Attorney Frank? I don't recall. <clears throat> when did we get them? When did you deliver them to us? When were they provided to us? Do you know? I do not know. I, I think the record reflects the dates of when 
yeah, it was oxygen council when they were. That's true. And when the inspection was, it was sure, oxygen. Those reflected. Okay. Do we need to do that? Now, do the work, you got to give them the work orders. Why show them the work orders and why were they repaired in 2013? We don't have them. Yes, you have them. I gave them to you. Right there. Yeah, right here, I think. They're right there. These are these are not the ones that are told. No, I gave them to you this morning. I know, that's why I'm looking here. Mm. I think they're here. There they are. No, that's the same. No. I don't have those. I'm not sure where they are, Wolfgang. many files. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, no, Commissioner. No, no. I truly appreciate it. You had some issues earlier with finding the paperwork. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Um, that, that's the one I can read the work order. What does it mean to you? This one. We received these. I know, but at the question is, why are you repairing it in July? It doesn't have anything to do with this. Yes, he does. No, it doesn't. Okay. Doesn't. How about the email with uh, Kevin Anzalotti? All right. Ask him to read it in the record, <clears throat> since he gave it to him from Don Mr. Fayola, here is a copy of An email that one of those us. produced emails. And it purports to be from uh, Kevin Anzalotti to. No, no, from. And from this. It purports to be yeah. an email back and forth between Don Hawksprung and Kevin Anzalotti. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you have any reason to doubt that this is a copy of what's been given to us as part of the records that we received? Mm -hmm. On June 2nd, consisting of emails from Don Hugsprung to the maintenance department personnel. <coughs> yeah, it looks fine. Ask okay. him to read it. Okay. Can you can you read that for us? What does it say? Um, Which part? Yeah. From Kevin Anzalotti to Don Hugsprung. The top part. <coughs> That's from Don to Kevin. Okay, and then below that is from Kevin Anzalotti to Don. Right. Ask me to read that. I, I know. It says I got it and it, it is what is it's bad for us, but I would not, I would not want to be here. We can't understand it. As you're telling them, all still have jobs, I guess that's a good thing among the word. Okay, and what was what was Don Hogspun's alleged message to him? I, Positive, look, that's set in stone. After the white teachers up, we meet next Thursday, then we can get moving. Of course, they'll need to come in and pack. It's going to be really hard. And what, what's the date of that email? Um, July 19th, 2012. And you, would there have been any work orders that would have been generated as a result of this, you know, the parent move that's mentioned in here? Um, probably not. Do you, do you know anything about this move? No, doesn't uh, doesn't ring a bell with me at all. It might, you're, have, you're it might have been something internal within the school. It's moving teachers around. No, no. Okay. Ask I, him, don't, I don't really know. Ask him again. This this is really important. Ask him to read the last one. You can read it. You can stop. Okay. All right. Well. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions for Mr. Fiala. No questions. Okay. No. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, 
Exhibit A from uh, 823. It uh, starts off with a uh, dated November 7, 2014. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner. There were no responses done. So now directing your attention, please, to Exhibit A in 461. Uh, and within that package, there is a request to the Chief of Police. Is that correct? <coughs> yes. All right. The first request to the police department is request number three for Newtown Police Department Department call on sheets. Do you have that? You see that, sir? Um, yes. And in particular, they were asking for communications between the Newtown Police Department and the Connecticut State Police Trooper One helicopter for December 14, 2012. 6 a.m. through 6 p.m. You see that? Yes, I do. And did you search for responsive documents? Yes. Were there any? There was none. <coughs> Were there any communications, to your knowledge, between the Newtown Police Department and Trooper One helicopter on December 14, 2012? There was no responsive documents. That doesn't answer the question. Objection. That, that's a non-responsive. Were, were, were there any communications down. between the police department and Trooper One on that day? There were no communications. Okay. Turning your attention, please, to request number four for the dash cam videos for Officer Pagola. You see that? Yes, I do. Did you look for that video? Yes, I did. And did you find one? <coughs> I did not want to find one for Figola. The correct spelling would be Figol, F-I-G-O-L, but I looked for that one also. Right. And is there a reason why there were no, there was not a dash cam video for Officer Figol for that day? She did not have one in her car. So not all of the Newtown Police cruisers have dash cam videos? That's correct. We're turning the page to page three. So four A is all is a request for the dash cam video for Lieutenant Senko. December 14, 2012. You see that? Yes. And you searched for that video? Yes. And was it provided to Mr. Halvey? Yes. Was it doctored in any sort of way? No. Did the video that was provided have a date timestamp? 
Yes. And how do you know that? I viewed it myself. In its entirety to, to make sure it's appropriate for release. All right, and request 3A is for copy of the Newtown Dispatcher call log sheets for December 14th from 2012 from 6 a.m. through 6 p.m. Did you search for those documents? Yes. And did you locate them? Yes. And were they produced? Yes, they were. And you've already testified as a 3D, which is the end communications with respect to Triple One. Yes. Nothing further. So how did Trooper One know where to go when it came to the scene of the Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012? It's speculative, but if you know, you can testify. The Connecticut State Police were uh, also on site, so I'm, sh I'm assuming that they told them where to go. Okay. So you, your testimony is that there was absolutely no communication between the Newtown Police Department and Sergeant McLean, the pilot of the helicopter Trooper One helicopter, is that correct? I could not find any evidence of any communications. Is that unusual? The Connecticut State Police had uh, taken over the crime scene, so it's not unusual. Okay, so it's not unusual. Okay. Let's turn our attention to dash cams video. Okay. I know that you. We, you had prior testimony in the last hearing on April 24th, 2015. I had asked you whether or not you had reviewed the videos, the dash cam videos that you turned over or that copies were being made for Mr. Halbig. On what device did you review those videos? On my desktop, computer, and my laptop. On two different devices? Yes. Okay. Who was the person that actually made the copies? I'm not sure. I'm going to show you two pictures. And we'll bring testimony in later, Your Honor, to hook this up. But I wanted to show you these two pictures. Do you notice the difference between those two pictures? The obvious is <laughs> that uh, one picture has an embedded um, captions, and the other one does not. Date and time stamp. Date and yeah. time stamp, correct? Yes. Officer's okay. name. And the officer's name. Yes. So those should appear on the videos that you gave to Mr. Halbig, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you didn't redact those videos in any way? No. So they're essentially the same thing you turned over to the State Police Department? Emergency, Department of Emergency Services? Yes. Okay. Good. Let me turn your attention to our last request, which we've just gone over. This is still a part of Complainants Exhibit A for case, excuse me, FIC number 14-461, and it's the April 25th, 2014 letter directed to you, and I'm directing your attention now to number eight in that letter. The request, as it's in the record now, states that the FOIA request, the Freedom of Information Act request, is for the sign-in log referred to on the soft traffic sign posted outside of Newtown Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012. Do you remember seeing a uh, traffic sign, electronic digital traffic sign that said everyone must sign in? Check in. Everyone must check in, thank you. Yes. And and who put that sign there? I'm not sure. Isn't it a traffic sign? Wouldn't it have been the directed by the police department to put that sign up? No. Was that a sign that was there on a daily basis? I think I saw it several times. Several other days? Yes. And to whom was it referring when it said everyone must sign in? Check All in. visitors. All visitors. Okay. So where is the log for that? Where is the sign-in log? Everyone must check in. Who, 
Where would that be? That would have been part of evidence that Connecticut State Police seized. Okay. Um, did you ever see it yourself? No. So you don't know if it exists? That's correct. Okay. I know you gotta make sure. No, no. This is really important that we we want the same videos. We have we want the same videos that yeah. they got. The only problem is this is the only one that your FOIA request yeah, asked for. Yeah, but just but remember, just throw that in, just in case. Remember, we talked about both of them. Just throw it in. Okay. So the the video. The, look, go back to the video dash cam. No, I'm moving around. Yeah. But let me just redirect your attention to that. Um, so, Chief Kehoe, uh, I understand that there were three DVDs from car number 17 for Lieutenant Cinco. Did, does that make sense to you? Show to him so we see it. Well, yeah, I won't hide it. Make it there, easy. Here's, make it easy for him. Like, well, this, this comes from the inventory log from this, the Department of Public Services, Public Safety. Did you get three? You're asking him about... I no, I'm asking him if he remembers no. whether there were three DVDs constituting Lieutenant Cinco's dash cam for December 14, 2012 from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Would there have been two, three DVDs? I would not know. Well, did, did you handle them before you handed them over to Mr. Halbig to review on April 23rd, 2014? 2015 when he came there to review them so you so you understand we have the evidence okay these are copies of the evidence for the Connecticut State Police that's how they copied them okay they made a copy okay so you made a copy to give to the Department of Public Safety that's correct. the state police in other words they make copies they from, made the ma copies. they made copies from our evidence from your evidence and then you made copies from your evidence to give to Mr. Halbig. That is correct. Except that the date and the time stamp wasn't there. The date and time stamp is there. Okay. You did supply the right. last time on this issue that the date and time stamp is embedded. Correct. Is that correct? And for purposes of clarification, the, the, the machines that you use are different from the machines that the state troopers may have used in order to copy them? It could be different. It also could be different software. Correct. And so in the software, it's the, the t depending on the software that you have, the embedded stamps could appear in a copy in one software and not appear in another copy if you use a different software. Would that be that would, that would be correct. And if you, it is there, you can, you can bring it out by pushing their various buttons yes. and, and options. This doesn't sound like he's very qualified to be testifying as to the IT issues surrounding this. I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult, Attorney Brown and Commissioner, but pushing buttons and doing some diddly do it doesn't... Well, do you have any evidence to refute that they provided you with the copies as they were? It seems Mr. Clear Halbig to me. testified that when he reviewed them, mm -hmm. there was nothing on them. He took a picture from his cell phone. This is the picture he took and there's nothing on them. Yet the publicly released ones would show up online all have date and time stamps. It would be simple if they would just simply correct it by sending us this. It's a simple thing. They should be ordered to send us one verified date and time stamp on the video. For some reason, there's none. And we were looking at this on their own equipment, Your Honor, and, and Attorney Brown. Show the video with the date time stamp that's been provided. It's not clear. It's a question of fact. Okay, so there's a picture. Show them the picture. This is what the state troopers have. We want the same thing. Show it to Brown. She'll understand it. She'll understand it. He won't. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Um, all right, so did you also turn over to Mr. Mr. Hal Halbig copies of 
DVD from the dash cam for Officer Seabrook? Yes, Jackie. Are we answered? That's something different request. That's something that's different. It answered, videos, it, it answered the videos of Seabrook and a different request. It's not under appeal, and those videos are provided. Stay with Cinco. So the request was only for certain officers in, the, in, in, in the, this request? In the request for two officers that are subject to this appeal, Lieutenant Cinco, which we've had testimony about, and Officer Nadal, and there were no videos for her car because her car didn't have the dash cam that day. Let's see the questions. in there for Chief Kehoe, so I think you've got to keep from the page. Okay. Subject of a different uh, right. It request. only it, it only is from Lieutenant Cinco. Okay. So if you, <laughs> unfortunately, I'll have to sustain the objection unless it has to deal with uh, only Lieutenant Cinco. Cinco. They're going to ask about okay. uh, Officer Understood. Seabrook. That is yes. a different. Yes, sir. Case. Okay. And, and for the record, that video for Seabrook was provided we with no timestamp okay. or records. I just helped you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. All right. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to have any other questions for him. We're going to just put this into the. You want him to read it. All right. So. Because last night they objected, now it's an official document. So, Commissioner, um, I want to provide you with a copy. Last time, at the last hearing, I'm sure that Your Honor recalls, when I was working to get into the record, the flight law from Trooper 1, opposing counsel, of course, objected, and uh, that it was not authenticated. So I did uh, communicate with the Department of Emergency Services and Public, Transport uh, Public Protection, excuse me, and I subpoenaed the trooper who, his name is Sergeant McLean, he was the pilot, to get this record authenticated. Unfortunately, uh, Sergeant McLean was away on military uh, service training. So this is a document that was provided to me which is authenticated, and I'd like to hand that to you for your review. I don't have copies of that, but I can provide them to Opposing counsel after the hearing, if Your Honor That's permits me to. He's got to read it. Exhibit or ID purposes. Full exhibit. I object. Uh, okay. While the certified, getting a certified copy takes care of the authenticity problem, um, it does not uh, take care of the hearsay problem. Without a witness testifying as to the contents of the document, it is hearsay. It is an out of court statement offered for the truth of the matter contained therein. It's an official document from it's the an state. official document from the state of Connecticut, a sister agency to this commission, Your Honor. Um, I think it's a question of weight rather than admissibility. So if Your Honor wants to give it the weight, Your Honor will afford it as commissioner. I think that you can give due, due weight to it as a sister agency, which is authenticated an, an official document. Here's it, here's it. Uh, what, is, what, is, uh, what is the purpose of offering this uh, for testimony, to rebut testimony? Yes. Provided? Yes. Well, I'm going to uh, overrule the objection. I'll allow that to be uh, Ask him to read it. And, as you said, give it the way it deserves. And see if he has it. He's got it. He's already oh, he's got, got a got copy. Okay. First, let's mark the exhibit, and then we'll let the, uh, the witness look at it. Um, okay. So which witness? This is in the... Uh, <coughs> This is in four six 
one. Yes, ma'am. Yep. So or the, uh, six one regarding call logs between it's three B under that. Yeah. So then. Okay. So you're marking. Here's your cover letter. So, Chief, I'm going to direct your attention to the Trooper One flight log. Um, would you read the description of this flight log? It's on the right side in the box. Yes. Uh, assist Newtown PD with the search for a suspect involved in an active shooter incident at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Provide CSP tactical team with surveillance during their search for a suspect in a residence. Assist CSP WDMC with obtaining photos of actor shooter scene. Thank you. Thank you. Um, who on your police department would have been the coordinator in, in terms of communication between your department and the state troopers who appeared on the scene? Probably two officers, one would be Lieutenant Mengele and Sergeant Holman. Do you know that for a fact for that day or are you, you said probably, is there any reason why you would doubt that? They, uh, Lieutenant Mengele was the, was the shift commander. Okay. And Sergeant Holman was the shift supervisor. Okay for the day shift on 12, 14, 12. And would they have been in communication with Trooper One? I would not know. You don't know? I don't know. Okay. Flip over, flip over. That's one more question. How, how would the pilot of Connecticut State Trooper One know that they're suspect in the woods? So how would the Trooper 1 pilot, pilot uh, Sergeant McLean, have known that there was an alleged suspect in the woods? Jack, it's speculation. He's a chief. He's an expert. The helicopter knew it didn't know. Sustained. Okay. No further questions. That's it. Thank you. A couple follow-up questions. Sticking with Trooper 1, Chief Kehoe, you did a search in your department for all documents relating to any possible communications between Trooper 1 and the Newtown Police Department. Is that correct? Yes. Did you find any? No. All right. Directing your attention, please, to request number 8 for the signing log. Did you see that? Yes. And you testified that your department was not involved with putting that signing log on the traffic sign, is that correct? Yes. Uh, you testified that the Connecticut State Police seized that log, or you believe they had it? They, it would be my assumption that they didn't seize it uh, as part of their evidentiary seizures. Is that signing log, was that signing log kept in the records of the Newtown Police Department? No. And finally, with respect to the dash cam videos, is there any question in your mind that the videos that were provided to Mr. Howdy contain the date and time, contain the date and time stamp? Ask and answer. Fine. I'll move on. Okay. If, I, if I could just follow up, with Chief, is there a way to provide the dash cam video with the uh, date and timestamp? Or what are you, was the testimony that you did 
to your knowledge, the, the video that you provided didn't have the The date. video I provided did have it. I did, I did view it myself on my laptop, which I showed Mr. Halpin. He didn't show it to me. The secretary did. Excuse me, my, my executive assistant did, uh, was tasked with that. I was not available. But we also told her that there was no date and time stamp. When it appears on your laptop, it shows the date and the time stamp as the, the picture that is uh, reportedly publicly available to you. Did it, did it show up in the same manner? With the time and then the clock ticking and then the officer's name and all of that on your no, laptop? You have to go through a series of steps to get it to show. Okay, so when you say it's there, you mean it's embedded, but for viewing, it's not showing up on the screen. Right, you need okay. to go through it, uh, two options and ask the uh, captions to be shown. Okay, so, so based on your understanding, who does that? Is the person viewing it once they receive the copy? So if I were to get a copy, I can go through a series of keystrokes sure. to make it appear on my computer, or is it something that you have to you have to do on your end so that when it's recorded it does show up when I get my copy. Do you understand that? I, I think I do understand okay. it. It depend again, I think it's gonna depend upon the the software you're using, what version of the software and the software itself. Sometimes that will automatically show That's um, not true. Our our original copies that we have from our dash cam automatically shows it. When we copied it, it did not. We had to go to the court. Then why didn't we get to see that? Okay. At the police department. I think department. that one of the issues oh, here is that they apparently are going to want the commission, um, if you were to find a violation, to order the disclosure of a copy that shows the stamps. And um, if there is a way to produce that type of copy for them, that probably resolves some of the issue that we have here, except if it's an issue on their end, that when they plug the DVD into mm -hmm. their, their computer with an older software, or software doesn't have that capability, it doesn't matter what you do, they can't pull it up, they can't There's get it. There's publicly available software that they can obtain that would show the date time stamp. If I may, if I'm Attorney Brown, I believe that there was testimony from my client that we were given the machine from the police department. It was their computer that we viewed it on. And on that computer, it showed the date and the time stamp. And there was, there was, you got, how many videotapes did you get? They gave me nine, but there were no dates and time stamps on them. So we asked for them to send us copies of what we were viewing, and then by the time they got to Mr. Halbig, they didn't have the date. So you saw it? No, no. Not the copy? No. Okay, yes. No, we did not. You saw it at the department. You saw it at the police department. Right. You inspected it. Did you see the time stamps there? No. They were not on. When we at the police station, there were no date or time stamp. And we told his secretary specifically that we want to buy him, had to pay for him. And when you send him to us, make sure the date and time stamps are on them. And when I received them, Still no date or time stamp. Okay, so you never saw I them. never saw them at the police department or the ones that I received at home. Uh, Ms. Brown, all I wanted is whatever the Connecticut State Police got in their DVDs, we just want the same copies. Nothing less, nothing more. We can't get it. If they want the exact same copies that state police have, they can do a FOIA request. No, police. he has it. He's the evidence keeper. He testified that state police came in and took their own copies. He said he maintained the evidence. I know. I'm going to come on. Just take it. No, don't, don't, don't. You're fine. I know. I know. You're the complainant. You're, you're. You should be passionate about anything in your presentation. Thank you, sir. I have one last question. Okay. Um, first of all, I commend uh, Petitioner Rosa. Before you sit, yes. you uh, solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that the evidence you shall give in the case and all questions shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the tr tr truth upon the pain and penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. Let the record show the first letter is no. If you can I have your spelling of your last name, please? L L O. We have no questions. L -L -O -D -R -E. We have no That's questions. Correct. All right, thank you.
Good afternoon. Um, what is your position at the time of your time? I'm the first selectman. And how long have you been the first selectman? I was elected in November of 2009 and took office on December 1 of that same year. In your capacity as first selectman, you received Yes, I did. And in response to those requests, did you search for documents? Yes. And did you direct others to search for documents on your behalf? Yes. And any documents that were within the first selectman's office, um, did you locate any documents that were responsive in the first selectman's office? No. Directing your attention, please, to particular to uh, request seven. That is a request for porta potties, ordered from Chatfield Porta Potties of South Ferry, Connecticut. And in particular, uh, a copy of the bill for installation and use of the porta potties referred to the above, ordered for use on December 14, 2012. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, do you know whether or not porta potties were delivered to the area surrounding the Sandy Hook School on 1214, 2014? I have no knowledge of that. Did the town order porta potties on 1214, 2012, or any time around that day for the Sandy Hook School? Absolutely not. Did the town pay for any porta potties? That, were, that may have been delivered to the area on or about 12 14 2012. no and no invoices obviously were received by the town during that period none directing your attention please to request number eight which for the sign-in log referred to on the traffic sign posted outside the sandy Hook elementary school on 12 14 2012. do you see that yes All right. and were you able to locate a copy of the sign-in log no do you know whether or not the signing log was placed on the traffic sign by the town of Newtown? It was not. Uh, and was it ever given to the town of Newtown? It was not. No further questions. So there's, let me understand this. There's a sign in, there's a there's a, a sign, a flashing sign that says, everyone must check in. But the town didn't put it there. Who do you think put it there? I believe Homeland Security put it there. Okay. Oh, that's good. Thank right. you. <laughs> Thank so, you. Okay. Now let's go back to the question regarding. No, oh, hang on a second. I, I think the response from Mr. Hauser is completely inappropriate. There's no evidence whatsoever that the first selectman was here voluntarily. I just and said thank you. Anything, it is what it is. The testimony is what it is. And I, I just said thank, said thank you. It's completely uncalled for. And I, I asked that it stop immediately. <laughs> Try to keep doing things just no more thank day. yous. Okay, all right. Um, so, all right. Um, so I guess I, I was a little confused by your, your testimony. Um, uh, uh, first selectman, uh, Lodra, Lodra, that's correct. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, you said that you don't know if the porta potties were there, but the town absolutely did not order them. Is that correct? I said I'm not aware of any porta potties there, and the town didn't order any. Okay. How do you know that the town did not order any? We have no invoices, no record, no direction by my office or any office that I'm in control of to order such. Do you? Well, who? So which offices did you check with? All of my staff. You check with all of your staff, which would be all of the various different departments that report to you. That's correct. Okay. Um, all right. And then also this this subject of the um, environmental biohazards uh, cleanup and removal, which is we're still talking about uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit A, uh, which goes along with FIC docket number 14-461 and the letter is dated April 25th 2014 and under it number six is the request for the copy of the contract in connection with part 6a above were you aware of whether or not there was a contract 
um, for an environmental biohazardous waste removal company to come in and remedy the... Sanitize. Sanitize, thank you. Okay, well, is your question, was I aware that a contract had been issued for that work? Yes. No. You don't know if one was or not. I had no part, no role in it, no information, no process, no responsibility, no accountability for any of that. Okay. Did you, did you do a diligent search to see if you could find any records regarding that? I had no role in that process whatsoever. I'm just asking you if you searched your records or asked anybody? No, I had no, there was no um, obligation on my part to pursue information for something for which the town had no role. Okay. And, um, okay, so you don't know if they were there. You don't know if there was a con. Well, you're saying there was no contract. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I have no information about that. Okay, but you did search. I did not search. I had no obligation to search because I had no role in that responsibility whatsoever. Okay. All right. Do you have any hold idea? Up, hold up. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Don't forget that question. So, uh, I guess there's some confusion. You're saying there's no role, so you, you didn't do a search because you felt there was no... I was never, I was not, we had no part in ordering any kind of a environmental biohazard waste removal <coughs> process. Whose job would that have been? As CEO, I had no role in that whatsoever. And you had answered that you were, the, whether you were aware of a contract, you would have previously answered no. I have no knowledge of that at all. Ask a who? way that somebody under you would have entered into a contract with your, out of your knowledge? That's correct. Who do you think? Well, who, who did um, first select Nandodra? Who did? Who, who did, did what? what? Who did order the porta potties? Talking about porta potties? Yeah, yeah we're switching. I, I was just asking about the no, 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 environmental. No. Oh, cleanup. yes. Who, who did? It's oh, been long. There was situation so who did? take the question please. all right we're looking at 6b and you testified that you had no role in in ordering environmental biohazards waste removal contractor to come in and sanitize okay. so who who did order that i do not know okay did you attend the february third i'm switching gears now so we're just moving along um, did you attend the February 3rd, 2013 Super Bowl in New Orleans with the Sandy Hill Chorus? No, I did not. Okay. I have no further questions. Yes. Thank you for testimony that I've, I've heard, uh, but before I move on, I'm just going to ask the uh, complainants, was there anybody else that uh, you feel that I might need to hear from prior to... Uh, I appreciate that you asked that, um, Commissioner. Let me just check with my comment briefly. Do we even want to bother with her? We just got her to say Homeland Security. No, we're finished. Okay. We're finished. Okay. Uh, we have no further witnesses. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, so at this time I'd like to you know, give each party, we, we've heard a lot of testimony, so they can just, you know, each side just give a five minutes, you know, just sort of wrap up. So Thank you. And I'll, uh, I'll start with the uh, complainants and then I'll allow the respondents to finish up and then we'll hopefully be able to close the hearing. Thanks. All right, thank you, Commissioner and uh, Attorney Brown. We appreciate your attention and time and patience with this process. Um, the complainant would like to say, uh, would like to present a few ideas here. Principally, school boards derive their power and authority from the state constitution and the statutes of the state of Connecticut. And accordingly, local school boards act as agents of the state government with all the authority and limitations imposed by the General Assembly of the State Constitution. The documents that we have been requesting have, I mean, they, they, we haven't had any objection based on exemption or privilege. None of the documents have been objected to based on exemption or privilege. 
In other words, all of the documents we've requested were public documents. I don't think there's an argument regarding that. We've had interference at every step of the way. It's been obfuscation, deflection, and interference, delay after delay after delay. These were not hyper-technical requests. Maybe they weren't the most artful requests that were put forward in the beginning, but they certainly were clear to me once I picked them up and started learning about what prior counsel had requested when Attorney Spinella sent these requests back in 2014. Here we are in June of 2015, and just now, just this past Tuesday, certain documents regarding the Dawn Hawksprung emails to and from the maintenance personnel were provided to us. That's just, that's evidentiary. It shows, it's an indicia of every step of the way it's been a process of obfuscation, deflection, and gamesmanship, frankly. Um, if, I understand that I'm looking at um, FIC 14-823 now, which Exhibit A shows the um, request, the Freedom of Information request directed to uh, various officials of, of Newtown, dated October 29, 2014. The first request is for maintenance work orders, copies of all maintenance work orders. How hard can this be? Um, it was for, uh, it was submitted back in October 29, 2014, and it took uh, quite a while for us to be offered any, any um, documents for inspection or for copy. Once we were offered those documents for inspection or copy, what happened was, and I think this is Exhibit R2, it is September 3rd, 20, wait a minute, this is a different one. Okay, excuse me for a second. I think Exhibit R2, we were asked for uh, $22.50 per page as provided under FOIA for copies of all maintenance work orders submitted by the school principal, Don Huxprong, or her designate to the school district maintenance department for any repairs, uh, new classroom doors, or painting from July 1st, 2012 to December 13th, 2012. That $22.50 means at 50 cents a page, that would have been 45 pages. Mr. Halby testified that when we finally got on April 23rd, 2015, an opportunity to look at these maintenance work orders, there were over 100. So I'm not sure what subset of these documents uh, Attorney Frank was going to proffer to us should we have given him the $22.50. However, my client testified quite clearly that in the past he had paid money for certain documents and were given irrelevant, irrelevant documents. We wanted to see them and it took a long time for us to get to that point. While there may be, and, and in terms of copies of emails, uh, it's come to our attention now, today, that the uh, certain departments did not exist, school district transportation provider didn't exist, and we did, were not aware of that. We would, have, we would have benefited from that information if the first letter we got from Attorney Frank had simply said, listen, you're, you're asking for a few documents that don't exist because the departments to which you're directed, they don't exist. Well, that would shorten things considerably. But that's not what we got. We've got a blanket objection, overly broad, and that that uh, the, the records were, it was an overly broad objection, and then a, Attorney Spinella tried to narrow it and was unable to do so. You can see from the objections that have been put forward throughout the process here that this has been a very adversarial process, and I believe unnecessarily unnecessarily adversarial. These are not cryptic information, and they're certainly public documents. Now, turning my attention to, I've got a lot of documents here. Here we go. 23. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Piles and piles. All right. Turning my attention now to plaintiff's exhibit or complainant's exhibit A, FIC 14461, 
we had asked about the Sandy Hook School security system, and we wanted a breakdown of the cost, and uh, we wanted a contract for the installation of that security system. We did get something, but it was from 2006. Now, Mr. Halby testified that he understood from his learnings and talking to the community and looking at certain documents that there was a much later installed security system, maybe even as late as 2011 to 2012. So we don't know if we got everything there. Um, in terms of this, the school board meeting on January 23rd, 2013, we asked for a copy of all supporting documents relating to each consent agenda item for the Newtown School Board meeting of January 23rd. We're not certain that we got everything. We believe that there was a field trip. We saw it on national television with, our, with Mr. Halby saw it himself. And they apparently performed there, and two of the witnesses have acknowledged that they, under, they knew about that trip. But yet, we don't have any information regarding the permission process or anything that should have properly, ought properly to have been on the board agenda. We've kind of extensively gone over the dash cam question, Your Honor and, and Attorney Brown. Um, it's just quite simple. We, by my client's testimony, not only did they not appear on the department's, the police department's own laptop that they showed them to us on, not only did the date and time stats not appear on that, their own laptop, they did not appear on the subsequent copies that were sent to Mr. Halbig. This should be a simple thing. It should not be like pulling teeth or rolling a lead ball up a hill. It should be pretty direct. And these are matters of public interest. Um, I find it hard to believe, given the official narrative of this tragedy, that there would be no environmental biohazardous waste removal company or contractor involved. But nonetheless, we have testimony from multiple witnesses, or at least from, from one witness in particular, that they have no knowledge of who or when, if ever, there was such a contract. So that's a big question mark for us. Same thing with the poor bodies. We learned quite a bit today about the sign-in uh, traffic sign, which um, appeared outside. Perhaps there is a sign-in log that has been suggested by uh, Chief Kehoe, as perhaps has been taken into evidence. We don't know. I guess we'll have to find out on a later date. So there we are, after months and months of grappling and going back and forth and experiencing this hearing, it just seems to me that public officials ought to be directly accountable under the Freedom of Information Act to simply provide documents. These are simple requests, and we have not, to this date, gotten the documents that we have wanted to get. So we would like the, the commissioner, we would like you to order the the town of Newtown through the department of the police department to turn over immediately copies of these DVDs that we requested from the dash cams with date and time stamps on them. We would like the commission to order the, uh, the school board to proffer a full accounting of the January 23rd, 2013 consent agenda and attachments. And given the lateness of all of this, res this alleged responsiveness, which came really too late for us to resolve too much, that there ought to be a finding by this commission that none of these profferings of, of, of allegedly compliant documents have been timely. So we're asking your new commissioner to make that finding as well. Thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you, Commissioner. For uh, hearing us. Uh, to the contrary, I think the public officials in the town of Newtown should be commended for their compliance with the Freedom of Information Act, particularly under these difficult circumstances. And rather than characterize, um, I I'm just going to go through the records themselves and the correspondence. We now have a full copy of the correspondence, and we'll see that whatever delay there was. Entirely the whole thing's fault. And that is shown in the document. I can't help it. So um, the first request was for the Sandy Hook Elementary School security system. There was a response on June 9th, 2014. Um, 
which says see documents to be provided. Uh, there was a request at the end of the June 9, 2014 letter for a check for the amount of $19, in which case those documents would be provided. Uh, you'll see in the record set before, uh, before you that once that $19 was provided through Town to Newtown, documents in response to um, the request were sent. Uh, and when I say documents, the name, the uh, documents relating to the security system that was installed in 2006 were provided. Uh, there are no documents that were not provided. Uh, Mr. Halbert is speculating that there is a 2011 or 2012 security system. The people who were involved with the maintenance of the building, particularly Mr. Viola, testified that there was no such security system. And so what we are seeing is, uh, rather than providing evidence that otherwise, uh, Mr. Halbert just does not believe that certain documents exist or don't exist. But we can't create or produce documents that aren't in existence. With respect to the school board meeting at January 23, 2013, which is request number two, a copy of the consent agenda uh, was provided, a copy of all supporting documents um, that were attached to that consent agenda were provided. Um, Dr. Rory testified about that. Um, and there's no evidence in the contract. With respect to the Newtown Police Department call logs, a copy of the Newtown Dispatcher call logs from December 14 was provided. Uh, it was provided when the $19 was paid. Uh, copies of all communications between the Newtown Police Department and Trooper One helicopter. Uh, there were none. Mr. Halbert doesn't believe it. There is no evidence to the contrary. Copies of the police videos. With respect to Officer Fiegel, uh, it does not exist and therefore could not be provided. With respect to the video for Lieutenant Cinco, uh, the chief was clear that the video that was provided had a date stamp on it. If there are copies available for the Connecticut State Police that are more easily visible because they perhaps have different software for copying, then he should go to the Connecticut State Police to get them. Uh, the town is not required either to buy certain software that uh, would be expensive so that it could copy so that the date stamp could be visible in some sort of way or to provide um, the complainant with certain software which would make it easier for him to view it. That software, as I understand it, is available. Uh, he can get it and once he gets it, he puts it on his computer or goes somewhere else that has it. The videos that he has um, will show those date stamps because it's on the video. Uh, the town of Newtown has no other way of copying it based on the technology that it currently has. With respect to the uh, school hazard substance report, the first request for the copies of the triannual asbestos inspection report from the school, uh, Mr. Maiello testified that those were provided and the $19 was paid. Uh, the second request B is not a request for documents. Uh, the third request for reports showing levels of lead paint and PCB, the testimony was clear that they don't exist, they're not required by the state, and those, uh, that testing and reporting was never done uh, during the relevant time period. Um, the letters sent to the parents, which is 5D, were provided when that $19 was paid. With respect to the biohazardous waste removal, um, the testimony was clear that the town did not engage a biohazardous waste removal company uh, in response to the Sandy Hook tragedy on 12-14. Um, that testimony was clear for Mr. Payella and uh, supported by the first selectman. Uh, keep in mind that in a crime scene of this nature, there were many other agencies involved. Uh, the Connecticut State Police was on the scene immediately and took over the crime scene. Homeland Security was involved. Uh, Department of Health was involved. Whether or not there was a biohazardous waste company uh, that came in uh, is a question of fact, but it's not a question of fact that can establish that the town of Newtown is not involved. So that if there is such a document, if there is such a contract, um, other agencies may have it, uh, but the town of Newtown does not. Uh, Porta potties, uh, the first one I can testimony is clear that the town 
not order porta potties and therefore would not have a copy of the bill um, or any other documents related to it. And the same goes for the sign-in log. It's not something that the town of New Town was involved in. Again, uh, with respect to both of them, there were other public agencies that were involved in this crime scene and may or may not have been involved in the ordering of the porta potties or the traffic laws or the signing sheet, uh, but the town was not. With respect to the other appeal, uh, 823, uh, the town responded timely on September 3rd, 2014. Uh, that with respect to work orders, the documents would be produced uh, once a check in the amount of 2250 was provided. Um, no check was ever provided, no response was ever made, and the appeal was immediately taken. Uh, notwithstanding that, the correspondence will show that those documents were made available for inspection. Uh, Mr. Halvey did not attempt to inspect those documents or make arrangements to attempt those, to inspect those documents until he engaged Attorney Wilson, and that was done uh, much later than, uh, they, they got the documents much later than they would have if they had either paid the 2250 or had uh, made arrangements for inspections. Uh, with respect to the scope of the documents that were inspected, uh, keep in mind that there were, Mr. Halvey has made many, many other requests, not just the ones who are on appeal. So when he came to inspect at Town Hall, there were documents that were produced for his inspection that not only related to the requests that are subject to this appeal, but to many of his other requests um, that had been pending for some time. And finally, copies of all emails, correspondence from the school principal, Don Coxbone, and her assistant, the assistant school principal with various departments. Um, there was an objection that was made to that request. Uh, under the rules and uh, under the practice of the commission, particularly with the assistance of the uh, ombudsman program, uh, there's an inter interactive process that is engaged in. The objection was valid. The request was vague, overly broad, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it requested copies of all emails from the school principal and her assistant to the various departments. Uh, at that point in time, the town of Newtown Sandy Hill School did not have an assistant school principal that had a lead teacher. Uh, again, if there had been a conversation, that objection could have been resolved. They asked for various departments. Some of those departments don't exist. If there had been a conversation, that objection could have been resolved. The request for the maintenance department was for the maintenance department. Uh, it was not a request for maintenance department personnel. If that had been discussed, it could have been resolved. And in fact, as you will see from the correspondence uh, in May of this year, when Attorney Wilson made a request to resolve that objection, it was immediately resolved, and those emails were produced almost immediately. So, in conclusion, uh, there is no question that, and the evidence shows that the town of Newtown made a diligent search for all the documents that were responsive to the request. It produced all those documents in a timely manner and made a good faith effort to continue to produce those documents and offer them for inspection by Mr. Halvig um, in a timely manner. The fact that he did not inspect or did not receive the documents in a timely manner, if in fact that is the case, is his own fault. Because he either chose not to pay the FOIA fee or make a trip to town hall even though he had been invited to do so to do those documents. Alrighty. Appreciate all the input you provided. I will uh, work with Attorney Brown to come up with a hearing officer's report. And as I said, the full commission will take up the, the report at a time uh, and we'll decide at that point to there I think at this point we'll just see what see, see what happens and maybe we'll get out on post-hearing officers' briefs that you might want to submit to the commission.
All right. At that time, uh, then I will uh, close this hearing at uh, 12:39. Uh, once again, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.